Hi there, and welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today, I'm excited to welcome guests Juan Wagnerman and Brian Cardiff, who are two of the three original founders of the Crystal Programming Language. Ari Borenzweig won't be joining us today. And as usual, I want to show a demo before the interview. Crystal is a language that looks and feels a lot like Ruby, but is statically typed and compiles to native code. And this demo is based on examples from the Crystal Language homepage. Here I'm making a web server, listening on port 2020, and in my handler block here, I set the content type, format a message, then say hello message. Here's the message function, which I pretend isn't statically typed, but it knows that I'm passing in a string, and so it instantiates a version 4 string. And if I access the root path, I want my message to be world, and I return an uppercase version for fun. The problem is, I have an error here, because Crystal is also nil safe, or what you might call null safe for another language. Not all paths assigned to my local variable message, so it might be nil, and nil has no method upcase. So let's handle other inputs here and make sure we always assign to message. Pull my pre-baked version here, where I take whatever path and replace non-word characters with space. Instead of assigning in either branch, let's just use the expression nature of if else to assign to the message. So let's see if the compiler's happy now. In fact, let's run this program. So we're listening on port 2020 because it's our favorite year. If we load the page, we get hello world as expected. Let's make this a little more interesting. Kill our server and pull out a pre-baked additional output. Hello from 2020. I purposely made this an array and make message can take an array because I haven't told it what type it needs. I can convert that array to a string and handle it the same as anything else. So let's run our demo again, but for fun, let's build an executable first. So here we see the executable. Let's run it. And we see, hello world, hello from 2020, just as expected. And we could read the path if we want to. Hello to you. Let's take a look at one more thing. Let's look at the symbols in here. We see that we have two different make message functions. One instantiated for string argument, and one instantiated for an array event 32 or string either one returning a string, just to show how it instantiates or monomorphizes this function for various possible inputs. Nice mingled names there too. Now I haven't shown a demo of how fibers and concurrency work in Crystal, sort of like in Go, but we'll get a chance to discuss that in a minute, because now we're going on into the interview, which I edited and chose visuals for after our conversation. To start with, could you please introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Brian Cardiff from Argentina. I am Juan Wagerman from Argentina as well. Uh, part of the Crystal core team. So how did Crystal get started? At the beginning, Juan, Ari, and me start poking around how to compile a small subset of Ruby. From there, it was a whole trip that took like eight years already. So how did you go from initial project to next steps and so on? So it all started like a pet project. We were always fan of Ruby. We did a lot of Ruby and Rails development at Manas. And sometimes we decided to start experimenting about a new language that behaves or feels like Ruby, but with better performance and static type inference on that kind of things. So it all started mostly like a game. And then eventually it started to grow into something that could be a real project. What was the motivation for the additional performance improvements? What kind of use cases did you have going on? Those days, at Manas, we were doing many web applications in Ruby, and although we enjoyed the language and the whole ecosystem, we start seeing some performance issues, and also knowing how the interpreter was working underneath compared with some other native code, we tried to come to a runtime that it was more similar to C or native code than, than an interpreted language, but without compromising the, the expressivity for the programmer. How does Manas relate to the Crystal community? Manas is a consulting company. We have different clients and Crystal is one of the projects of Manas. Manas allowed us, Juan, Ari, and me to invest time and effort on Crystal. And from there, once we become more public or we start getting a community around it, the community starts shaping the features that we go into the standard library or the compiler, and also the process that we do for developing the compiler. That is how we start relating to them. 
although we have some sponsors, some companies, they usually don't ask for an agenda on their side. They're happy with the current developments. From the beginning, the idea was rapidly engaging, especially for the Ruby community. But you know, it's not enough to just create a project on GitHub and have the community to make that project successful. So it was actually great that Manas could support us in the meantime to spend our time to guide and put together all the collaboration that we received from the community. That was the advantage of having Manas supporting us for making the Crystal project successful. Awesome. So in your uh, design of the Crystal language, have you ever made any decisions for the sake of Ruby familiarity that you wouldn't have made otherwise? So we adopted the Ruby syntax and style of programming because it was very familiar to us and we were already producing many of our customer software with Ruby on Rails very successfully. So we inherit a lot of things from Ruby and we try to have our own crystal way of doing things, but always inspiring on the Ruby basis. I would like to add that since Ruby is such a rich language, that force us to aim high, to add a lot of ingredients. Maybe those ingredients will come after if we will have started from scratch, but uh, Ruby has a lot of legacy and going through a small subset of it, it will not feel quite right. And some decisions that we did was to enable the same stories in Ruby, but with a different syntax. We see that with uh, how we can do alias method chains, for example, or how we implement DSLs. So it's not the same core components in the language, but we enable mostly the same stories. That was part of the goal. Like uh, meta programming, for example, Ruby is really flexible because it allows you to create classes or methods on the fly. But for Crystal, we wanted to have the same feeling, but optimizing for performance, that means we needed to have something at compile time that enables that. So instead of having things like big reflection frameworks like other languages, we provide a rich macro framework so you can generate the most optimal code at compile time. And at the same time, having the sensation when you code that you are on a very dynamic language, even though it is not. So besides the obvious Ruby and Go influences, what other languages were taken into consideration to design Crystal? Besides Ruby syntax and Go concurrency model, something that is not that evident is that uh, Crystal has multi-dispatch. That is partly inspired in Julia. Uh, that's the other main language that has the flagship of multi-method, uh, multi-dispatch. But then we have some background of C Sharp with .NET and Erlang and on the runtime of Erlang. So th there are some ideas from those languages and also the design process is not always straightforward. It's not that we grab pieces from different languages, but maybe when we are trying to solve some problems we see out there in the, in the current languages, what are the ideas? And from there, we kind of start getting inspiration or justification on what is done in other languages. Awesome. Going back to the topic of type inference, which we already discussed a little bit, Crystal chose a compromise of type annotations required for instance and class variables, but not required for function signatures. Has this been a good balance? I think that overall it, it has been a good balance as a short answer, as a longer answer. It hasn't been always like that. The first version of Crystal aimed to have like global type inference, but that didn't scale that much. And there is always some tensions between if we want more type annotation in the sake of documentation versus less type annotations in, uh, for the sake of productivity. There is always some tension about that. And having more type annotations will simplify some scenarios but complicate others. Overall, there are like seven rules for inferring type uh, instance variables. I think that those are cool rules so far. It also helps to improve the compile time errors because when you don't have to annotate everything, I mean, the compiler can say, hey, I cannot type this thing, but it's more complicated to give guidance to the developer to realize exactly what's, what's going on. So having some type annotations also improves the compile time error. And something mm -hmm. else about implicitly typed functions, they remind me a little bit of templates in C++. Does this ever result in large compiled binaries? Well, it definitely increases the size of the binaries, but we didn't see that as a problem. I mean, the binaries generated by Crystal are still pretty small compared to other languages and memory space is cheap nowadays. 
what matters most is uh, performance, maybe. So that was our goal. And that's why we decided that it would be always good to have a lot of more specialized functions instead of one generic function that handles everything. Sort of a tangent, a different kind of size question. How do you decide the size of the standard library? We wanted to include whatever is required to most applications created in these days. Some people maybe have a stronger opinion about if a web server or JSON parsers or things like that goes or not into the standard library. And uh, we wanted to have a language that you can install and have everything you need for the day-to-day -day programming that happens these days. And having the, the best JSON serializers or pretty good uh, HTTP client in place already, I think it improves the experience of the developers. And also avoiding the pollution of competing solutions that, for example, we don't want to have 500 <laughs> login libraries uh, that every application could use, but also every different packages could integrate to those. So there needs to be some base ground for the packages to start interacting together in a simpler way. We see that on the login library and, for example, on the database adapters. So everybody can build on top of those. Although the, that is not exactly the standard library, it is on the Crystal Lang organization that, that package to have a bit more a strong position. Okay, so on the topic of type system again a little bit, unions and non-nillable values are starting to appear in many languages today. Does that compete with Crystal's value? It definitely made me happy to see that there are others going in the same direction regarding the type system. So discriminating nil versus not nil values is great. I hope we'll be able to compare how things evolve in terms of implementations on the compiler or semantics of the language as it's all. But also the value of the language is also given by the standard library and the community. So. We need to focus also there. It's not just the, the roles of the language and it will be a good, good language. We need a, a good tool set uh, and that's on behalf of all the community to be built. Uh, going back to the topic of multi-threading, the preview got announced over a year ago. How has multi-threading worked out since that time? We had some adoption. Uh, I mean, many people were expecting Crystal to implement multi-threading before they could say Crystal could be made into production. We are not thinking about getting a weight of the single thread mode because we still think it's really valuable. I mean, for many people, the single thread mode of Crystal is the way to go because it's much easier to think about. And in some cases, it's even more performant because maybe single thread is all you need and it's always better to not have to synchronize threads or data structures in memory. But yeah, we have a very good reception of the multi-threading feature. And the good thing is that we plan to maintain both the single thread and the multi-thread version of the runtime. So since last year, we make the runtime, the fibers and the IO channels work on, on multi-threading. What is missing, if we want to say multi-threading is stable, is first to have a discussion of what multi-threading means for the rest of the standard library. For example, if we want array to be thread safe or not, and what are the impacts of those. So besides the coding, we need to have that discussion in the community and as a design team there to see where we want to go with the standard library. In terms of design, there's been a lot of discussion of Crystal 1.0 coming out soon. So what's left to finish that? We know that the Samba library is big because we, we want it to be better included. So there are some corners that are not as polished as we want. So we are iterating on them. And right now we are aiming to have a series of free releases for the 1.0. So we want to give them a bit of time for people to test them as an unstable release. It would be the first unstable release we haven't been doing unstables. We only have nightly unstable. So we want that time for the community to give feedback on these new pre-releases before tagging 1.0. Do you have any guesses when that's going to come out? The pre-releases should be in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we are finishing that. Depending on the adoption and the reception, it will be maybe we're talking about a couple of months for 1.0. I'm, I'm not. I can set a, a time, but we want it. We want it soon. Everybody wants it soon. Hopefully before the end of the year, but if that doesn't happen, uh, we should expect Crystal 1.0 for the very first portion of the next year. 
Okay, <laughs> awesome. It'll take me a couple of weeks to do the editing on the video. We'll see whether you get the first pre-release out first or if the video gets out first. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. So what are your highest priorities after 1.0? After 1.0, we want to improve the support for our production system that is allowing instrumentation and monitoring for people using it in production to have better stories to know what is happening. And then we want some broader adoption regarding platform. So ARM and, and Windows is on the goal. So instead of jumping on features, we may be focusing more on those two stories and also developer happiness regarding compiler and tools related to the compiler. And of course, keep an eye on how to improve the multi-threading, having the discussion, coding a little bit on that. I think those are the main stories after one of Also, I think about the um, scalability of the compiler itself. I mean, some people is concerned about how Crystal behaves for very large projects. And we want to start focusing on that also. So I know one of the big talking points whenever Crystal comes up is the Windows compatibility thing. Do you want to give a couple seconds of discussion of your views on that or should we skip it? The Windows compatibility is more about the standard library, how it should abstract way. We have some unique system that have been going away through the work of the community, but also we need to set up the infrastructure to ensure it's not an experimental support. We want proper setup, proper support. And for that, we need the infrastructure and Windows machine to develop. We, we, <laughs> we don't use them. So it requires a lot of work to integrate a new platform. It's not just it compiles today, let's give it a, a right. So there needs to be some discussion of the processes to support every new platform. What are the most interesting examples of software that you've seen written in Crystal? Well, the compiler is written in Crystal. It's pretty interesting as, as a project itself because it's bootstrapped. But then uh, there are a lot of charts that have some clever designs and they are taking the Crystal way to the limits and that push uh, language features. For example, Lucky Framework has a lot of uh, nice ideas to understand besides building a web framework. It, there are nice ideas of how to produce software in a Crystal way. That's regarding frameworks or shards. But then we know companies such as Deployed that make genome analysis. That's a really interesting domain. Nicola doing electric cars and using crystals in some part of that. Sikova doing cryptocurrency related projects and New Religion doing security audit stuff with crystal. They're all interesting domains and it's amazing that crystal is used on those. It's great. And we have a list of used in production on a wiki page. Uh, you can add those to yourself so we can discover. I don't know all the call ways that I mentioned, but just the domain, I find it amazing. So it's very interesting beyond the language they use. So what's most exciting to each of you in the future about Crystal? I would like to see broader adoptions, both from devs and companies. I like playing with tools for developers, something that I discovered, I like it more than I would expect. So I would like to improve those stories, but also as a domain, I would like for Crystal to be used more in the academic and numeric fields. We'll see if that happens. It's a personal taste. I would like that to happen. Yeah, I would like to see Crystal also being used on other domains like mobile or desktop applications. Even though I'm more familiar with a large infrastructure like server side applications, but I mean, now that we have ARM support, having the support for mobile platform is closer. So I would like to see how Crystal will behave in that kind of environments. And do you have any other closing words? For me, Crystal was the first open source project I've been involved actively as a maintainer. So there's probably things that I should have done better. <laughs> it's a journey of discovery, both of new people, of new ideas, and things I enjoy doing that I didn't expect it for. So it is a great journey for me being involved in Crystal. Yeah, for me, I would like to give a special thanks to all the people that contribute to Crystal. I mean, nothing of this would be possible without all the help that we received from the community, from documentation to changing big pieces of the compiler or implementations of the standard library. We couldn't make all this by our own. So I want to really give thanks to the community that made this possible. Awesome. And thank you both very much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Bye, y'all. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye.